So a foundational principle in marketing and customer value is that customer value is based on a deeper and a better understanding of customers or better customer insight. So the question that arises is what is a customer insight and more importantly, how do we get it? How do we get better at getting customer insights? So I think of a customer insight as a fresh and a non-obvious way of understanding customer needs, customer behaviors, or more importantly, customer frustrations that can become the basis for a business opportunity. So what do I mean by not yet obvious or not obvious to other people? It's sometimes an insight is a way of looking that other people have not only not seen, but actually considered to be counterintuitive. If the herd is moving in one direction, you'd move in the opposite direction, and that sometimes may be insightful. Let's take a couple of examples. If you were to locate a retail store, where would you want to put it? Well, it stands to reason that you'd put it where there's a lot of customers or a lot of people. And also, if you had fewer people in the area, fewer customers in the area, the size of your store should be smaller. But then along comes Sam Walton at Walmart and says, what I'm going to do is actually put very large stores in the middle of nowhere. Now, what was his insight? He had understood that as the highway system had improved in the United States as a result of the Eisenhower Highway Bill, it was now easier for customers to travel longer distances to go to a to a supermarket. Also, it was cheaper now to ship your products to the store. So based on that, he realized that if you built a very large store where there were few people, but if they were coming over from a much larger radius, you actually had enough demand. And more importantly, you actually had no competition. So this was the foundation of Walmart, but it was counterintuitive. Similarly, one of my students who used to work for Apple told me that when he was the product manager for the iMac, when they were first coming out with the iMac, they had everything was locked and loaded, they were ready to go to the market when Steve Jobs called a meeting and, you know, and said, we're gonna do four colors. And all the left brain people in the audience kind of said, this is nuts, you know, we're gonna increase our inventory, we're going to create problems with forecasting, we're gonna delay the launch. So what's the big deal with colors? And Jobs said, well, we're going to do four colors because color is the way people express themselves. And it really makes the computer more personal, more of an expression, a reflection of your personality. And, uh, and of course, color had a very important role to play in the success of the first iMac. And if you recall, their advertising tagline was, sorry, no beige, think different. So that really became the cornerstone of their campaign. But again, not very obvious to people uh, because it really involves questioning uh, conventional wisdom. So customer insights, a few sort of ideas on customer insights are that first of all, they will never come from quantitative market research. So don't look for them in your surveys because customer insights involve going deep, building empathy with customers and trying to understand their point of view. So it's the qualitative research, the exploratory research, the empathic design where you really seek closeness with customers and really try to understand their lives and how they're thinking. That will lead to better insights. It's really the notion of exploration. It's the notion of sort of really using eclectic methods of trying to really get closer to your customers. Also, customer insights often come from anomalies. Anomalies are a great way to begin to think about insights. So what is an anomaly? For instance, when Kodak was entering the market for digital cameras, they found an anomaly. The anomaly was that although an analog film that, and cameras in the home, 75% of the pictures were taken by women because women are the memory keepers of the family. But in digital, they found there was less than a quarter of the pictures were being taken by women. Now, why was that? So, as, so this was an anomaly. As they dug deeper, what they discovered was that women had three problems with digital cameras. They said, first, whenever I want to use it, the battery's always dead. Second, even if I can use it, I don't, it has too many buttons and too many features. It's too complicated. Third, even after I take the pictures, I don't know what to do with them. It's too complicated to get them into my computer or onto the internet. So they simplified this entire process 
and came up with the easy concept, the easy share camera, the easy picture gallery, and so on. And that became a cornerstone of their success, the ease of use. So an anomaly is a great place to start looking for customer insights. And also customer insights can come some, sometimes come from the intersection of trends. And uh, when I spoke with the team that had built the first iPod, their insight was that if we look at the tr one trend, which is personal music, you know, which had the Walkman, of course, had been very successful, and the other trend was digital music, uh, you know, which Napster had become very successful. Now, the convergence of these trends, which is personal digital music, should be a huge opportunity. But in fact, that market had not really developed the way it should have. So that became the basis for Apple's investigation on why is this the case. And what they found there was that people wanted to take all their music with them in an unobtrusive way, and they also wanted a simple way to actually download and use music legally. So the three innovations that they created was the size, which was a pack of cards, the storage, which was 10,000 songs, and, and the third was an easy way for you to buy and make music legally, which was iTunes, and the rest is history. So that's really what customer insights are. They are a penetrating view of the obvious and looking at things differently and really doing it by getting into the minds and the lives of customers and moving your own blinders because as someone once said about customer insight, it's about walking in the customer's shoes. But first, you have to take off your own.